Okay, who's ready for some science? That's what I thought. Get ready, it is, it is full of illusion and mystery and ships. I'd like to welcome to the stage, Arthur K., long-standing fellow of Odslan. Please come to the stage. Hey, everybody. I gotta... Being among this community reminds me that it always makes me feel weirdly sort of confessional, like, hi, my name is Arthur, and I used to spin fire. Hi, Arthur. So, that's right, it's, and all the rest of us. So, my name is Arthur, I'm here to talk about uh, flying ghost ships and other weird things that happen in the sky. The sky can be a reasonably interesting place even when weird shit isn't happening in it. But then you get things like rainbows, or the eclipse, or for those of us who are here, the night of day and night of orange sky. And we know the science behind these things. So, that's right, science. Um, rainbows are caused by refraction, refraction and reflection through water droplets, and the eclipse is caused by the shadow of the moon passing across the surface of the earth, and the day of orange sky was caused by the North Complex fire putting a bunch of dust into the air, which was suspended over San Francisco for a day and caused really, really bad air quality for a while. But none of these things cause flying ghost ships crewed by the damned, forever haunted to never, never land. This is the Flying Dutchman. Uh, flying haunted ghost ship from the 1700s and the 1800s, and it turns out sightings even into the 1900s, the early 1900s. It was purported to be a Dutch merchant man, thus the Dutchman, part of the Flying Dutchman name. And it was purported to fly, thus the flying part of the name. <laughs> the crew was supposed to have either committed some kind of horrible atrocity, even by the standards of the 1700s, thus earning the animosity of God, or else the captain had engaged in some kind of deal with the devil, which also doesn't go particularly well. There was one captain, a Dutch captain whose name was, perhaps good, <clears throat> there was a Dutch captain whose name was Bernard, which I just happened to remember, who, who was known for traveling from the Netherlands to Indonesia and back again unusually fast. And if you're a sailor in the 1700s, that maybe means deal with the devil, which always seemed a little weird to me, like uh, brutal oppression and slavery, just fine. Boat go fast, Satan. <laughs> but so water droplets in the air and dust and the moon are not what cause the specter of a ghost ship to appear. But we know what does. Uh, it, that's right, science does. It's a combination of two things. It's the old trick where you have a dense layer, in this case, water. Custom art for this show, by the way. Very, very fancy. But so the cold water is denser, the air above it is less dense, and if you have an object that is between them, the object appears to be in two separate places at a time. We've probably all seen the science experiment. And then the other thing that causes the Flying Dutchman phenomenon is heat shimmer. A very specific kind of heat shimmer, but especially if you've been to the desert, you are familiar with heat shimmer and the fact that it can cause images to appear to be in more than one place at a time. And the very specific phenomenon that causes the Flying Dutchman effect requires that you be out in a broad, flat place like the sea. You need a cold layer of air at the bottom, like at sea level, and then you need a hotter layer of air up above it. And what you effectively get is a combination of the water effect of two images and heat shimmer, but it has to be big enough to encompass most of the horizon, or at least an entire ship. And when that happens, you get these really weird ass fucking visuals out at sea. Uh, this is a modern photograph. Obviously they didn't have cameras at sea in the 1700s. Sorry about that. <laughs> the name of this phenomenon is the Fata Morgana, named after sorceress Morgan Le Fay of Arthurian legend, because it's basically fucking sorcery, right? <laughs> uh, the other fun bit about this is that although the sea is a really great place for this effect to occur because it's broad and flat, it helps sort of like with the water 
trick with the chopstick. It helps if your line of sight is flush with the dividing line between the upper and lower layer. So if you're at sea level, it's kind of easy to get your eyes on plane between the cold and the hot. If you're up on a mountain, it's much more difficult to do that. But you can also get this on land. And some of you may have seen this. Uh, Midwestern states sometimes get this, and you can get it out in the Arctic plains. I, I love this photograph because you can see exactly the point where the farm buildings and the storage silos, basically, the actual normal image of them end, and then the oversized heat shimmer reflection, the Fata Morgana, exists right on top of them. Um, also, <laughs> fun fact, San Francisco has our own personal version of this. The Fal I think it's the Falloran Islands. I may be mispronouncing that. <laughs> Farallon Islands, thank you. Consonants can be difficult. I'm real sorry about that. My bad. But so the Farallon Islands are about 25 or 30 miles off the coast of San Francisco on the other side of the horizon. So you cannot normally see them from SF. But when the Fata Morgana effects are right, when you get the cold air on top, I'm sorry, the cold air on the bottom and the hot air on top, you get this heat shimmer island image that you can see from Ocean Beach. Uh, so we have our own personal Fata Morgana. Um, the actual Flying Dutchman legends continued to exist through the 1700s, which was when most of the legends happened because of course, that's the age of sail and that's when most sailing vessels were at sea kind of most actively and especially around the Cape of Good Hope for those who care about that kind of thing. But then also through the 1800s and we, humanity, continued to use sailing vessels for shipping through the early 1900s. And in fact, sightings, actual sightings of the Flying Dutchman continued to happen through the early 1900s. And since we're in San Francisco, we have our own Fata Morgana Flying Island. So I would like to raise a glass or a jug of peach tea, <laughs> if you've got one. Uh, whatever you do, do it well enough that a sailor from the 1700s might suspect Satan. <laughs> <laughs>